it's, it was always a great looking bike. Um, it, the styling on it was um, fairly unique and um, it was a very low bike, although it's still got reasonably good ground clearance because the motor's uh, in profile is very narrow and uh, virtually all the uh, centre gravity is on the, um, uh, the axle heights. The problem with always with an outboard motor when you put it into a, a normal like a bike setup is keeping it cool because the, the outboard engine is designed to run cool water you know, from the sea. So it's, it's always you know, running nice and cool. Uh, which helps engine performance. You can run, uh, you know, tighter clearance on pistons and all that sort of stuff. So it's a bit more tricky when you put it into this setup. And what they did, um, Dieter and uh, Kim, they made up a magnesium belly pan, and which was like a, uh, a long tray. And that's uh, the motor sat bolted on top of that, and the gearbox sits on the back of it. And that um, that motor pan is filled with water. So it, it holds about oh, about five, five and a half litres, you know. So it's a fair amount of water to try and keep it cool. You see that the um, two cylinders at the back, two at the front, four, you know, fore and aft. And uh, to get the short wheelbase, the motor had to be very close up to the gearbox, and the, um, which made it very difficult to get the rear plugs out. And if you got caught at the start of the race with a fouled up plug, which tended, it was a bit prone to do because if it had all flooded um, and sat in the bottom of the crankcase, the flywheels would just throw that raw fuel back straight onto the spark plug and wet it out. So it meant it was a bit of a last minute effort to, to get it all out. But it's fairly unique in that it's got a rotary disc valve right in the centre of the cylinders uh, for the inlet. But that's driven, it, it has to drive at right angles to the crankshaft and instead of using a bevel gear they used a basically a simple idea with a tooth belt uh, just running um, around a couple of rollers through 90 degrees to get the drive to the belt. Yeah, so they ran the two into one exhaust pipes because that was more convenient. If you ran four you probably wouldn't have any room but I don't think they found a great difference in the um, difference in power, you know, if you've got a short manifold it probably doesn't make too much difference. Yeah. But oh, another thing too was that if you look at those exhaust pipes there, at one stage Kim tried them um, hooked up to the throttle and as you make the exhaust pipes longer it gives more low down power. And as you shorten them up it, it makes it rev harder. And Kim had it hooked up with a setup uh, on the throttle, which as you turned it on, it, um, it, it pulled the pipes forward and it gave it really good power up top. But unfortunately, it was very heavy on the throttle. And um, if you were doing it today, you'd do it with an electric servo motor, you know. And I suppose you could probably only do it with this type of motor with the straight header pipes. On other bikes with the curves pipes, it'd be probably a little bit awkward to do you know, because you couldn't shorten them, they'd have to be in a straight line. And of course they're doing that now with power valves getting the same effect, you know. But even so, he could still adjust the pipes in and out, you know, for whichever circuit he wanted to go to. It'd be nice to have a, a pair of them. Yeah. But it's good, you know, like for racing really, because when you go to meetings, I mean, it's fantastic to see some of these old bikes out there, um, because they're fairly unique, they're all different, you know. It, it's quite fascinating the engineering when you look back on it.